we reflect today on our Lord as a 12-year-old boy being lost for three days. Our Lord is found in the temple, rejoining Mary and St. Joseph. Nothing more is recorded in scriptures of the time of the childhood years of Christ. These years are known as Christ's hidden life. Today's feast celebrates the Holy Family, Mary, St. Joseph, and the child Jesus. And so this Sunday is called Holy Family Sunday. Let us understand that the family is the most important unit of society. God created Adam and Eve as the first parents and entrusted to them the duty of propagating the human race. God did not create human beings in the same way that he created the angels. For God created the angels all at once. But in creating mankind, God created a man and a woman. He joined our first parents together, commanding Adam and Eve to propagate the human race. God still depends on parents to bring forth children and to raise those children to be responsible citizens in this life and future members of the kingdom of heaven. God blesses parents by the sacrament of holy matrimony. The parents have the duty of raising their children virtuously so that the children will grow up being prepared for their adult duties. Pope Pius XI emphasizes the sacred duties of the family. The family is more sacred than the state, and men are begotten not for the earth and for time, but for heaven and for eternity. God firstly established the family, and only later did families together join in order to establish societies for government. The family existed before the state. The state, therefore, does not have the right nor the authority to change the family. Laws, therefore, should not interfere with the family. Rather, the laws of society should help families. The country will be a strong nation if families are virtuous, for the families are like links in a chain. The links of the families make up the chain that holds society together. If the families are not what they should be, then they are like weak links in a chain. A weak chain will break. Society is that chain. And so society needs virtuous families. Pope Leo XIII explains, the family may be regarded as the cradle of civil society. And it is in great measure within the circle of family life, that the destiny of states is fostered. The easiest time for forming a child's character is when the child is young. The training that the child receives when it is young will determine that child's character as an adult. The Jesuit priests and brothers 
were well known for teaching boys. Now the Jesuits had a saying, Give me the boy until seven, and I'll give you the man. The Jesuits realized that the most important character formation for a child was in the very early years. Do you see then how important the family is? From the years of infancy, the child is secure in the home. The home is a safe place for the child. In the home, the child learns to be secure and confident in life. The child plays and works in the home. A good home produces good children. In the family, the children grow up to accept responsibilities as adults. How suitable it is that we have the Feast of the Holy Family to teach us the role of each member of a family. Our Lord remained in Jerusalem without Mary or St. Joseph knowing. Mary and St. Joseph travel a full day's journey before they realize that the Christ child was not in the caravan. You see, it was the custom for men and women to travel separately in a caravan. The children could travel with either parent. At the end of a day's journey, the families would spend the night together. And so Mary expected that the Christ child was with St. Joseph. And St. Joseph just as naturally thought that our Lord was with his blessed mother. Thus, Our Lady and St. Joseph were not aware that Our Lord was missing until the end of a day of traveling. We can understand why Our Lord was lost for three days. For Mary and St. Joseph had to travel a day back to Jerusalem before beginning to search for the divine child. Our Lord spends this time honoring his Father. He is present at the temple sacrifices, which foreshadowed his own sacrifice on the cross. Christ also spends his time by fasting and in prayer, even prayer at night. St. Bernard tells us that if Christ had anything to eat during this time, it was by begging food. And if he slept, he slept on the bare ground. Besides these religious duties, Christ was speaking with the doctors in the temple. At 12 years old, Christ had come of age. He is now bound by the law to visit the temple in Jerusalem. Men who lived in Judea were obliged to visit the temple once a year. However, the law, as it was then interpreted, did not bind men who lived outside of Judea to visit the temple every year. The Holy Family lived in Nazareth in Galilee, 60 miles from Jerusalem. And so St. Joseph was not bound to visit the temple every year. Nevertheless, he made the long journey every year, together with Mary and the Christ child. In talking with the doctors, Christ shows that he has knowledge beyond what might be expected for a boy of his age. Could it be that our Lord would now begin his public life? Would our Lord now begin to preach, to perform miracles, and to found his church? 
But no, after briefly showing his superior knowledge, Christ goes with Mary and St. Joseph and is subject to them in the home for many more years. Now, since Christ is God, he had all knowledge, even when he was first born as an infant in the manger. But while he was growing up, Christ hides his divinity. For love of us, he makes himself dependent on Mary and St. Joseph. Now it is true that in talking with the doctors in the temple, Christ shows that he had greater knowledge than might be expected for a child of his age. But let us notice how Christ talks to the doctors. He does not argue or in any way come across as being superior to these doctors of the law. Rather, our Lord asks them questions. By asking questions, Christ brings the doctors to a deeper understanding of the religious truths. Again, since Christ is God, he had all knowledge. But our Lord hides his divinity by seeming to have only the knowledge of a boy of his age. The doctor, te- the, the gospel tells us that he advanced in wisdom and age and grace before God and men. The gospel tells us that as Christ grew to manhood, he showed greater knowledge. Christ gives us a lesson in humility. Our Lord must consider humility to be very important indeed, since he is willing to cause such grief to his blessed mother and St. Joseph in order to teach us this lesson. How deeply Mary and St. Joseph loved the divine child. Their sorrow must be compared to a person who deeply loves God, but who is afraid that God has withdrawn himself because of one's own fault. In finding our Lord, his blessed mother addresses him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Consider how Mary does not put herself first, but she firstly mentions the sorrow of St. Joseph. Our Lady is holier than St. Joseph. Nevertheless, St. Joseph is the head of the Holy Family. Yes, Our Lady firstly mentions the sorrow of St. Joseph. And only then does she mention her own sorrow. But Our Lady's sorrow was greater than St. Joseph's sorrow. Our Lady's sorrow is greater since she has a closer union with her divine child. Our Lady tells of the sorrow of St. Joseph, for he is the foster father of Christ. Our Lady recognizes the authority of St. Joseph as head of the Holy Family. And Our Lady also hides the mystery of the Incarnation. She does not claim for herself the honor of her divine maternity, for it is up to Christ to reveal these mysteries in due time. Why Christ puts his parents through the terrible grief of being lost for three days is also a mystery. A mystery of the faith is something that God has revealed, but that we are not able to completely understand. Christ allows this trial 
for St. Joseph and Mary in order to be a lesson for our families. Let us then consider some lessons that we can learn from the Holy Family. We see how diligently St. Joseph, Mary, and the Christ child fulfilled the religious duties of worshiping in the temple. So also may our families be generous and faithful in giving God his due worship. Each and every one of us is obliged to worship God. Now, we are obliged to worship God not only individually, but also together as families. Let me propose three resolutions for our families. I propose three things that our families should do together in spite of being busy and having various schedules. As far as you are able, do these three things together as a family. Have your main meal together. Pray the daily rosary together. And attend Sunday Mass together. Your meal together is your daily family social time. And by praying together and attending Mass together, you will merit many graces from God for your family. Our Lady of Fatima revealed that especially in these times, God wishes that we pray the rosary together each day as a family. Our Blessed Mother gives us the very promise of God that through the rosary, her immaculate heart will triumph and there will be world peace. Yes, by praying the rosary together as a family, we are doing our part to bring about world peace. And how desperately our modern world needs peace. By the rosary, we will also have peace and tranquility in our homes. Yes, if we pray the rosary together as families, God will bless our families. For how true are those mottos of Father Peyton's Rosary Crusade. A family that prays together stays together. A world at prayer is a world at peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.